Brian and I were talking about uh, one of the ancient versions of human beings, and I, just, I sent him this the other day mm -hmm. because I read this <coughs> article that I thought was amazing where it was talking about um, they, they found stone, wooden structures that were half a million years mm -hmm, old. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, so I'll send you this, you, Jamie. Uh, you sent that to me as well. Yes, I did, yeah. Uh, this is uh, very wild, right? Because that's, uh, what is that species? Well, half a, million, species? <coughs> half a million years ago is pre-anatomically modern humans. Right. Uh, the earliest example of anatomically modern humans so far found is about 300,000 years, and that's from uh, Morocco. Uh, but there's a new new thinking going on now. What about the Neanderthals, who we know that anatomically modern humans interbred with? Maybe the Neanderthals are just another anatomically modern human form. Maybe they're not, they're, right. they're not a different species. They're homo, homo neanderthalensis as opposed to homo sapiens. But maybe it was all one, and there were different forms of human beings mm. at that time. If In that case, these wooden structures would fit within the Neanderthal time frame. Well, this is that same culture, Jamie, that uh, Brian was telling us buried their dead in a very sophisticated way where they had to crawl through these cave pattern cave nah, Brian systems. was Brian was talking about Homo naledi. I think this is Homo naledi. This is from this is I from South Africa. I think that's what they're talking about. I I believe that's what they were talking uh, about. Wooden structure from Zambia. From Zambia. Uh, Homo naledi is in South Africa, and it is fascinating. And Lee Berger, uh, who I mentioned to you. Homo, a species similar to, to Homo naledi. Yeah. Uh, my, See, Homo, how do you say that word? Homo Hi, naledi. Hi, no, the other one. Homo heidelberg. Heidelbergensis. Heidelberg, something, some remains found near Heidelberg in Germany. Basically. So this is what it says. We don't know exactly what species made the structure, but Homo, how do you say it again? Homo he, heidelbergensis. Heidelbergensis or a species similar to Homo naledi. Might be candidates. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So Homo naledi is, is interesting. That's the result of a, of a National Geographic explorer in residence called Lee Berger. Uh, and he, as you discussed with Brian, we won't go over mm -hmm. it again, but he found evidence of, of deliberate burial mm -hmm. uh, in a very complicated, difficult cave system, which yeah. you can hardly access. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, of course, immediately this was published, and it was published in a Netflix documentary. The archaeological establishment descended on him like a ton of bricks mm. and, and tried to find all kinds of reasons why it couldn't possibly be uh, deliberate burial. Whereas I think it would be much more interesting if archaeology tried to, first of all, look at all kinds of reasons why it could be deliberate burial, because that opens many doors. Whereas saying, no, it's impossible, just closes, closes all the doors. Well, what are the alternative explanations for why they had mass burial sites inside of a cave? They fell there. Something like that. All of them? Yeah, all Over of them. Over many, many, and, many and, and years. And somehow buried themselves uh, mm. under the topsoil uh, and, and then left engravings on the cave walls, which, yeah. are, which are very, very similar to in engravings that we find in, in the caves of France, for example. Well, it does make sense, though, that ancient human species would slowly learn the things that we learned. They would slowly pick up tool making. They would slowly pick up the ability to harness fire. Yeah. And that as time went on, as the species became more sophisticated and more advanced, as it evolved, it would just refine those methods. Yeah, that, 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 that does make sense. The, the, the question is, when did it happen? This is, right. why, this is why I sometimes wear a T-shirt, and I did on the last show with you, which says, things just keep, stuff just keeps on getting older. Yes. Uh, and a lot of people don't understand what I mean by that. But what I mean by it is that archaeological discoveries are constantly pushing horizons back, but not considering the implications of that. It wasn't so long ago that anatomically modern humans were thought to be just 50,000 years old. Now, if... if Anatomically modern humans with the modern brain, with our capacities and abilities, have only existed for 50,000 years. That doesn't leave a lot of room for a lost civilization to come and go. But then we find 196,000 years ago from Ethiopia, and then more recently 300,000 years ago from Morocco. And suddenly the expanses of time that have not been investigated, in which a civilization could have risen and fallen, become much greater. And that's mm. why it's important that stuff just keeps on getting older. Very fascinating also that the oldest known ones are from Africa. Yeah. And obviously that's where Egypt is. Yes, and that's, yeah. that's exactly where Egypt yeah. is. And, and, and uh, you know, we must, we must recognize Egypt as an African culture. Yeah. That is what the, that is what the ancient Egyptians were. Uh, I believe their language was, uh, belonged to the Hamitic language family, which is closely related to 
the Somali language, for example, in, 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 in East Africa. African culture, incredibly sophisticated, incredibly advanced, doing stuff that we just don't know how to do today. Archaeologists mm. will tell you they could build the Great Pyramid, but I defy them to do that. The Great Pyramid is literally impossible. It's something that doesn't make any sense. It certainly doesn't make sense as the tomb of a megalomaniac pharaoh, uh, which is what we're told it was. Well, it's also sort of the ultimate if you wanted to leave behind evidence of your culture, something that if there was a cataclysm and people did have to sort of rethink the history of the world, that would be the best thing to leave. Time capsule. Because yeah. it's so insanely sophisticated mm. that you're forced to sort of reckon with this idea that something might have existed before us. Yeah, definitely. And it incorporates all kinds of interesting math. It incorporates pi, which again is supposed to have been discovered by the Greeks. Uh, it incorporates the dimensions of the earth on a particular mm -hmm. scale. There, there, there's a lot about the Great Pyramid which suggests that it was intended to transmit information to the future. And that's one of the reasons why it's so big and so enormous and why we keep on finding new chambers and passageways inside the Great Pyramid. There's a thing called Scan Pyramids, which is now going on, which is using the latest tech. And they've identified a second Grand Gallery above the Grand Gallery. The, the Grand Gallery is one of the wonderful features of the Great Pyramid. It's 30 feet high, 120 feet long rising up through the center of the pyramid. But now we know there's a second one above it that hasn't been explored yet. And that's, wow. a, that's a result of scanned pyramids. There's corridors and passageways that we didn't know were there. So the Great Pyramid is gradually, bit by bit, revealing its secrets. And it's almost as though it was waiting for a time when human beings were ready to receive those secrets and had, and had the ability to decode them. How do they access the second Grand Gallery? Scanning. It's all I mean humans. How can humans get well, into it? Well, it could, it could, that's a very, a very good question. It's there. The question is, at what point was it made? Was it, was it part, of, it should have been part of the original construction of the Great Pyramid. As they were building the Great Pyramid, they created one Grand Gallery and they created another. Is it I, the same size? It looks to be the same size, yeah, from the, wow. from the scanning. Which the scanning just shows a, a, a void, mm. but I'm informed reliably that the, the recent investigation has identified that void as another Grand Gallery, which is inside the Great Pyramid. And the Grand Gallery is one of the wonders of the world. So it could have artifacts in it? It, it could have artifacts in it. Same goes for those shafts that cut through the walls of the Queen's so-called Queen's Chamber and King's Chamber. I, I resist these names that archaeologists have applied to the Great Pyramid. I resist the notion that it was the tomb of Khufu. Uh, I resist the notion that the subterranean chamber, which is 100 feet vertically beneath the...